I'm excited to share with you some proven strategies to help you win more board games. Because let's face it, a little victory makes the recipe for a board gaming event a little bit sweeter. So let's dive in and make sure your next game night is a smashing success. Winning isn't everything, but it sure does add to the enjoyment of the game. So let's focus on the core principles that will elevate your gameplay, no matter the board game. Every board game out there has winning conditions. Think of them as a summit of a mountain. When you know all the necessary information about the climb, you can find the best path to the top. Winning conditions consist of two things. Number one, how you can win the game. Number two, how you can lose the game. I know, sounds super obvious, but listen to this. Most people upgrade unnecessarily or gather too many resources, making their journeys longer and inefficient. So don't be this guy. If you constantly remind yourself about the winning conditions, you will avoid these pitfalls. Even in cooperative games, understanding winning conditions and reminding yourself of them is crucial. In Primal The Awakening, you have to deal 10 wounds to the boss in 10 rounds without being knocked out. Now that you have reminded yourself of winning conditions, you realize that offensive cards are great, but defensive cards will help you with survival, which is key. Otherwise, you even won't get close to the summit. Once survival is secured, then you can go to dealing damage as fast as possible. Let's take a look at a bit more complex example in Dune Imperium. A game where players fight for the control of the spice-rich planet. The game ends when somebody reaches 10 victory points. However, the winner is who has the most points at the end of that round. And that's important because getting those 10 victory points is just the horizon. You're so close, yet not at the summit just yet. That means in this game speed is crucial, but so are the extra steps. Like getting secret intrigue cards that might tip the balance in your favor by giving you extra victory points. So whenever you're making any decisions during the game, just go back to the winning conditions and ask yourself, do these actions help you get closer to those conditions? Knowing this and constantly reminding yourself of this will help you navigate the game with purpose and precision. With solid understanding of the winning condition, you have now paved good foundations for your plans. Just keep the summit in your sight at all times. With the summit in sight, it's time to plan your road. Visualize where the victory points, resources or checkmate will be coming from. Let's take Bitoku as an example. Even in this labyrinth of unicorn puke, you can find symbols that mean victory points. Identify them and determine the simplest path to reach them. And those always will be the first steps of your basic plan. Let's break it down even further. In all of the board games ever created, yes, all billions and trillions of them, you actually have just two options to pick from. Number one, taking a step towards the summit. Number two, preparing yourself to leap towards the summit. In chess, for example, either take your pieces and threaten the opponent, or position yourself to set up future threats more effectively. In your classic hero game or resource game, you either play cards that give you victory points immediately, or cards that will set you up to get more victory points in the future. In your typical boss battlers, either attack now, or help your teammates for future benefits. So how do you choose between these two options? The key is to recognize that just like in real life, time, represented by your actions, is the most valuable currency in board games. Think of it as a limited supply of a precious fuel. You want to use it in the most efficient way possible. Always ask yourself which of these two options will give you most benefits with the least expenditure of this precious resource. This approach will chart the best path of action and maximize your chances of winning. And that's your basic plan, at least for now. Make sure to always have multiple paths in mind. 
This means if your opponent decides to block your primary choice, don't worry, you will have plenty of options left. And if you're ever in a pickle between two very seemingly similar options and you can't choose which path to take next, well, that's actually a really good situation to be in. Your opponents might pick an option that blocks one of your paths and, well, that's not too bad because you are flexible, right? You have multiple paths, so you take the one that's left. But if not, then just pick one of the options this time and the other one the next time you're gonna play the game. It's fine to just improvise and pick some things randomly. You'll learn from it. Obviously, the more you play the game, the better you will be at it. But experimenting and trying out different things will boost your progress massively. You will ask why the hell this dude is in a forest while talking about board games? I have no clue. I'm experimenting and that's exactly what you should do as well. Most importantly, never be stubborn. Your flexibility will be your secret weapon. Come on. Think of your game plan as a road trip. Whenever there's a traffic jam, your GPS will reroute you to keep you moving towards your destination. In this case, winning the game. Similarly, staying adaptive will keep you on the track towards victory. When picking out actions, prioritize those that might not be available to you later. Note that this rule mostly affects only competitive games. If the game has a display of unique cards or resources that are running out or limited action spaces, grab them while you can. Any solitary actions can usually wait, but prioritize these resources because they might not be there for your next turn. It's like shopping on a Black Friday. First of all, get all the doorbuster deals and then leisurely check out what's left. Hmm, 27 euros, not bad. Hmm. Each character, faction or company that you might play will most likely have some unique strengths or weaknesses. Always make sure to use them to your advantage. In Nemesis Lockdown, if you're playing a janitor, don't go in guns blazing. Use your character's scrappy nature, gather tons of resources and let those other fools fight the queen. You have better things to do, like survival. Ugh. Factions or character abilities is just a small part of the building advantages that you have. Consider also map layout or turn order. Think about what benefits do you get when you go first and what actual advantages do you have when you go last. Be sure to maximize all the advantages given to you. Think about all the heist movies you've seen. There's always the muscle, there's the hacker, there's the mastermind, and they are in those roles because they're best at it. And that's exactly what you should do. Take your characters and place them in the best roles possible. In other words, play to your strength for the best chance of success. Keep an eye on what other players are doing. If they are experienced players, watch their moves closely. They might know strategies that you haven't even considered. Like the saying goes, good artists copy, great artists steal. So before finalizing your moves, just take a deep breath and recheck your decisions. Hmm. It's like rechecking a novel before publishing or rechecking a TV series before they go live. Leaving a coffee cup in the scene might be quite embarrassing. Imagine you're playing Dune War for Arrakis, a fierce battle game about destroying sieges and settlements. You might move your armies into better positioning and feel like a brilliant general. But wait, did I just leave an opening for my opponent to swoop in and exploit? Uh-oh. That might feel almost as awful as leaving a Starbucks cup in your shot. Not quite there yet, but pretty close. The easiest way to go about it is whenever you have figured out your moves, just consider what does that mean to your opponents. Board games aren't just about strategy, they're about people. And your social skills are just as important as your tactical prowess. First of all, don't take it personal if somebody messes up your plans. Think of it as a plot twist in your favorite TV show. Unexpected and challenging, yet an opportunity to adapt and grow as a player. Second of all, approach all negotiations with a cooperative mindset rather than demands. Hey, I can see that you can fulfill that contract and get two victory points, that's really cool. You know, if I could get two coins out of it, I could help you out. Do that rather than, give me those two coins or I will kill your dog. Wait, what? 
And contrary to what you might think, it's not to create this perfect gaming atmosphere or making people feel good. No, it's for your own strategic benefits. Starting negotiations with demands or selfish intent lead to negative reactions as well as poor conversations or no conversations at all. It's like trying to cut in a line without a good reason. It only causes friction and pushback. And you might even get thrown out of the restaurant altogether. Even when it comes down to board games about aggression and battles like on Gods of Egypt, where gods fight each other for their relevancy, it's still important to take care of diplomacy. Attack too early and you might provoke a coalition against you. Wait too long and your friends might backstab you in the back. Don't you just love board games? And the right timing depends on the social interactions just as much as it does on the game state. My point is, people are part of a board game just as much as the game pieces are. Before we wrap up, remember that Board Game Hangover has a great community usually sharing their tips and experiences? So check out the comment section below this video to see more insight from smarter people than me and join the conversation yourself. It would be lovely to see the comment section become an encyclopedia of people's ideas and experiences. So go down there, write some ideas or just say, hello, everything's appreciated. Ultimately, playing a board game is a victory in itself. At the end of the day, it's not about winning or losing, it's about spending quality time, learning new things and pushing yourself to grow. Think of it as a workout for your brain. It sharpens your cognitive skills. It enhances your social skills. It trains your memory. Sparks creativity. Improves your focus and attention span. Every game night is a chance to refine your skills and enjoy the process! Woo! Whenever you're strategizing or negotiating and having fun, remember that the true victory is the shared experience. And yes, the fact that you're having fun. Send this video to one of your friends who you would like to play more board games with. And prepare yourself for the next board game night because be sure they will be ready. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that bell icon, subscribe, like. Love you all and I'll see you in the next game night.